Hello, how are you? Brianna Drellis here. Welcome to my webinar. I'm so excited you guys are coming to um, hang out with me and learn the three power plays. What's up, Darrell? So happy you're here. Um, right now, we're just going to take a minute to uh, make sure that the tech is up. Um, if you can hear me and see me and, um, you know, and if you're ready to like have some fun, then can you type in the chat right now and just say, yes, what's up? I can hear you or put a number one in. If yes, you can hear me, put a number two. If yes, you can hear and see me, uh, that would be great. So I'm looking for some ones and some twos, which would be really, really nice. Hi, Diana. So I would love to know also, um, can you also type in the chat like where you're calling from or where, where you're logging in from? So uh, I think I see a couple of Dallas. I see, I know Darrell, you're from Orlando, I believe. So if you can type in the chat also and let me know where you're calling from or where you're logging in from. AT, oh, Austin, awesome, very, very cool. And thank you, Diana, for letting me know you can hear and see me. Midland, Texas, ooh, New York, New York City. Am I dating myself? Do we know uh, <laughs> that? Pace Picante, uh, Picani, uh, commercial, anybody here, here? What's up, Anna from Oak Cliff? Nice work. All right, Orlando, we've got Dallas. Um, ooh, congrats on your new townhouse in Dallas by UTD, Mateo. That's pretty cool. Hello, Michelle, happy you're here. Uh, again, um, I think if, if you're having any issues hearing me or seeing me, please let me know and um, go ahead and type in the comment where you're calling from. We're going to wait just some, another minute while people come on. And um, uh, I think that I, another question I might have for you is, you know, maybe you can let, you know, let me know exactly uh if there's one particular question, be thinking about that because at the very end, we're gonna be taking questions. Um, I'll be offering uh, kind of an FAQ section, but then also some, definitely some Q and A, some question and answer. So that's gonna happen at the end of the training. So if you have questions, please do not hesitate to put them in the chat. And again, um, I just wanna make sure everybody's seeing me. Um, Danielle, welcome from the background, helping me with some tech stuff. So um, if you, you know, see Sean either in the chat or in the background working on some tech, then that's why. So don't worry, um, he's amazing and he's super excited to be here too. So there you go. What's up, Sean Sumner? So right on, again, the Q&A is gonna be at the very end. So if you have questions, you can feel free to type in the chat, but honestly, it'll be easier if you wait till the end to ask it. So I would recommend right now, very quickly, if you don't already have a pen and paper next to you, beside you, please go get one quickly. Go run and do that. Um, write your questions down, and I will answer them at the end. Um, be sure to pose those questions. The video is getting stopped. Uh, is, is anyone else uh, having a hard time with the video right now, seeing me? Um, my signal is very, very strong. Uh, can you type in the chat, uh, Darrell, if you can... Uh, if the video gets stopped, hit the reconnect button at the top. Um, okay. Oh, that would. Okay, cool. Thanks, Sarah. Um, Sean, is that a note for me? If the video gets stopped, hit the reconnect button. Or is that a, a No, a that's note? for any attendees. You guys should have a con okay. it's just a connection problems. Just reconnect at the top and uh, it should work. Great. Thank you, Sean. See, that's, isn't Sean amazing? Okay, good, D Diane. I'm so glad that you're reconnected, that you're here. This is awesome. Um, great. So ultimately, um, you guys are here because you want to learn the top three power plays that you can make, in my opinion, of course, on how to, you know, book more gigs, how to make more money, most importantly, how to not be in the same place that you are today, right? Not that today is a bad place to be. But we all want to experience momentum. We want to we want to experience growth, and we want to move forward. Um, and a lot of times, you know, life gets away from us. And when we're not committing to action, and we're not committing to learning and growth, um, we have a really really hard time moving forward. So, again, I'm super excited that you guys are here and welcome. Um, I'm gonna let you know again that we'll do a Q and A at the end. 
I'll also have a couple of FAQs, some you know frequently asked questions that I get that I, I might throw out there. And um, also the way that the webinar software works would be exactly what Sean just shared with you. If you're having any problems with connectivity with the video, you can always reconnect. So take a look at the top of your screen and look for that reconnect button. And um, also, you can utilize the chat, which everyone seems to be doing. So if you have questions along the way, again, hold them till the end because I will be answering them at the end of the webinar. And um, I wanna make sure everyone understands how to use the chat. We can see everything you're typing in. So like, don't get too crazy um, with your personal information. No, okay. <laughs> um, and then also um, just know that uh, we have a lot, of, a lot to cover today, but I'm gonna, I'm committing and, and just, it's really important to me that I'm really, um, um, okay, cool. Thank you, Sean. Um, I wanna make sure that you are definitely getting value and that you are um, really getting a ton out of this. So that's why you're here. So here we go. I'm gonna kind of set up what you can expect for today's training. Um, first, I'm gonna actually tell you a little bit about me. There's some of you who don't know me, some of you, who I've worked with before, um, some who maybe I've connected on social media. So for those of you uh, who don't know me, and even for some of you who do know me, I'm gonna be sharing a little bit more about my background and also why I'm doing this today, like why I'm here, why this is important to me. And so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, after that, I'm gonna jump into those three power plays that you can make to you know, get more gigs, make more money, and like I said, um, really have that forward momentum in your music career so that you are not in the same place a year from now. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about how you can take advantage of some free strategy calls that I'll be offering over the next few days so that I can help you in a unique and personal way really identify what those next best steps for you in your career will be. So again, we're gonna start, I'll start by sharing a little bit about myself. We'll jump into those three power plays. And then lastly, I'll give you an opportunity to. Um, you know, sign up and have a free strategy call with me and I'll help you uh, figure out what's next for you. So without further ado, are we all here? Let, before we get started, you know, are you, are you tracking with me? If you could type a number one in the chat, that will help me to see that we're all here. You still see me, you still hear me because we're about to dive in. Okay, awesome, great. Okay, so, a little bit about me. I'm a performing artist consultant. I'm an author and course creator to, thank you y'all, um, to Performing Artist Pathway. Uh, it's a book that I wrote a couple of years ago. Uh, you can find that on Amazon. And then most recently launched my first online course, the Performing Artist um, Pathway online course, which utilizes and really preps indie artists to really realize the best that they can in their music businesses. So I help them take a small business approach to their music business and help them set up the foundations so that they can have a sustainable music career. So what I like to do and what I'm super passionate about is empowering indie artists to realize um, sustainable careers in music through small business principles. So that is something that is really important to me. And I'm also a mom of three. I have three awesome girls, ages 14, nine and six, my gosh, I don't even know where the time went. And um, I happen to be a restaurant owner as well. My husband and I own three restaurants. We are literally about to open our third restaurant early 2020. So we're super excited about that. And so what I do for the restaurant is I actually manage all of the marketing and business operations for the restaurant. And then my husband does all the other good stuff, the, the cooking, the greeting, the, the hugging, the making drinks, all that good stuff. So the only time I really go into the restaurant is to eat and um, maybe have a glass of wine or two uh, every once in a while. So that is a little bit about me and what I do, you know, on a business level. And then really how I got to this point was, you know, I, I've been doing musical theater uh, as a young child from the time I was nine to through college. Um, I was a performer and singer songwriter my entire life. I was always performing and I went to Pepperdine University. I majored in theater. After I graduated, I didn't want anything to do with the theater. I was totally burned out. I had been doing it since I was nine years old. So honestly, it, it was way like 
I was over it. And, and I haven't done musical theater since. That was uh, 20 years ago. So that tells you how old I am. So after musical theater, uh, you know, naturally, since I was in Los Angeles, I decided I needed to get into acting because I was in LA and that was the most logical step. So I started doing commercial and radio voiceovers, which um, was a great experience. But even after a couple of years, I realized I was kind of bored of that as well. And that music was my first love. I hadn't been singing for a couple of years and I, and I just realized, oh my gosh, I have to be doing music. What, what am I wasting my time? So I joined a band in LA. I started gigging and I became a top 100 finalist season four of American Idol, the year Carrie Underwood won. And back in those days, that's when we circled, you know, the Cal Palace with, you know, thousands of people. I think that year, 100,000 people auditioned for that show and only 100 made it to Hollywood. So I was part of that top 100 and, um, you know, experienced that, you know, reality show craze uh, back in the early days of it. That was a great experience for me. Um, and then shortly after that, real life stepped in for my husband and I. We actually found out that we were ex um, expecting our first child, my, my first daughter. So of course, I thought my life in music was over because now I'm a mom and I can't do music and be a mom, which um, I know now to be totally false. It was just obviously something I had in my mind that I couldn't find a way to do both. But luckily I had a, um, I had an intervention from my my husband. He's like, you know, listen, Brie, if you are going to not do music, not only are you going to make yourself crazy, but you're going to make me crazy. So you need to find a way to incorporate music in your life in some way. Um, and honestly, I I'm so thankful for that conversation that we had in Las Vegas by the pool after his sister's wedding because that was a huge shift in my life. And as soon as we got back to Dallas, I um, I hit the ground running. I formed a band and within a couple of months I was performing at the House of Blues. And then I started gigging around Dallas um, quite a bit. And um, it, was, it was really incredible. It was a great couple of years until I started having more babies. And then it just became a lot of work, honestly. Um, and I wasn't as excited about it. So things started shifting again for me. And again, this is just that journey. You know, I always say that like one stepping stone leads to the next. And what happened from there was I started vocal and performance coaching. That led to the material for me to write Performing Artist Pathway, which led to speaking at music festivals, which led to working with and networking with and talking to more industry professionals and really becoming um, just a part of the music community. And at the same time, my husband was opening restaurants. So, you know, within a couple of years, I went from working a full-time, you know, nine to five job, gigging on the weekends to being a full-time, you know, musicpreneur, entrepreneur with my husband and I. So a lot changed in a short amount of time. And I share this with you because one thing you should know is that just because, you know, you may not be having a huge life shift or having babies or anything like that, there is something for you, right? So what is that one thing that's either distracting you or what is that life, that life occurrence that's kind of derailing you from doing music? And, you know, I'm going to share with you um, a little slide because I want to show you um, a little something that is really, really important for you um, in your um, in your careers. OK, so here we are. Um, this is what we're doing today, which we already talked about. And this is a little bit about me. Right. I do it all. I kind of do. But I love it. This is what I want to show you. This, you know, I look very pensive here. This was me when I wasn't doing music. There were three years after I had my first daughter where I was not doing any music at all. And I was getting really depressed. It, it really took an emotional toll on me and a physical toll. And this was the conversation that, or this is what spurred that conversation I had with my husband poolside in Vegas, right? What I realized was that if music is in your bones, you must exercise your creativity or you will physically, mentally, and emotionally suffer. 
you really don't have a choice if you're a creative or an artist. You have to find a way to exercise it. So I, I just want to make that quick point to you because it's so critical. And when I made that mindset shift to move forward, to actually make, make a way for music to be a part of my life, I realized that although I didn't feel ready, life was short. And I was never too old, too young, too tired, or too busy to grow, learn, and make things happen. And I believe this for you. And I, and I want to encourage you to make that mindset shift and believe it for yourself. Because music is a part of your life. And it's definitely um, something that I highly recommend you paying attention to. Awesome. Okay, so here we go. Within, you know, like I said, within a few years um, after, you know, American Idol and all of this change and growth, um, I, you know, made this huge mindset shift and it was it was really, really big for me. So even though I, I have a lot of my plate and I always have something cooking, you know, that I realized that, you know, despite everything that I have to do, that music is always a constant. And for you, you know, you have these like indie to do lists, right? You have all these things that you're that you feel like you have to do as an independent artist. But it is possible for you to figure it out as well. And, you know, today we're going to dive more into how we can have those shifts so that we can really grab hold of the most, um, you know, that we can offer for next year. So, you know, I will say this before we move forward and we're about to dive in is that, you know, over the years, as I've learned so much, the, there is one thing that I did learn that's a surefire way to stop your momentum. And obviously, this is aside from life events that you have no control over. But in my opinion, the number one reason that you lose momentum in your personal and professional life is because you sabotage your own success. So what I want to tell you today is not to hinder your success. Sky is the limit. You and you alone are responsible for creating and realizing your own personal success. So you got to get out of your way. So I want to ask you to do a, do me a huge favor today. And that huge favor is to make a commitment to let go of that self doubt, to get out of your own way and really to stop feeding any negativity. That's kind of brewing upstairs. That is something really, really um, important for you to do as we move forward and as we jump in to these next three power plays. So if you're ready, <laughs> um, Sarah, I'm so glad that you relate. If you're ready to make that commitment with me, can I get it like a what, what, like a hands up? Are you ready to let go of self-doubt? Are you ready to kind of open up and, and get out of your own way? Are you ready to at least try? Like, I know that that's a huge ask. I know that that's really hard to do, but ultimately if we're going to grow and we're going to learn and we're going to move forward, then we got to get out of our own way. So I just want to encourage you to type in the chat that you are ready to do that with me. Let's, let's do it together. Okay. So we're going to dive in and um, I'm so excited to see, yes, I'll try my best. Good for you, Mateo. You should try your best because you deserve it. Um, and we're going to dive in and we're going to talk about the, what you're here for today, right? You're here to get um, some knowledge and to learn the three power plays that you can make to get better gigs, to make more money and not be in the same place that you were a year from now. So I'm going to open up our slideshow one more time and we're going to jump in and get moving. So here we go. I'm excited for you guys. All right. So like I said, sky's the limit. Don't hinder your success. I, I so believe in this. You have to have that self-belief. So let's start with power play number one so that you can get better, better gigs, which I say right here, expand your fan reach, make more money. You're going to create security and not be in the same spot a year from now because you're going to realize the full potential of your opportunities. And there are endless opportunities. So I want to encourage you to just go grab hold of them. All right, so first and foremost, power play numero uno, power play number one, right? And this is something that I dive much deeper um, into in my online course, um, but power play number one is to become a networking boss. Now, 
when I say become a networking boss, I want you to think about aligning yourselves with artists, not only artists though, with industry professionals and learn how you can be an asset to them. It's really, really important that you think about what you bring to the table as well. Okay, so this is not just about networking, shaking hands and having shallow relationships with people. This is about having authentic engagement with other people in the music industry. And by the way, networking can extend to those outside of the music industry as well, because you never know when that doctor is throwing or whoever is throwing their next house party and they need an artist to come in and do a house party for them. I mean, private parties and private house parties are a really lucrative way to make money as a musician. So if you're only networking within your music circle, then you're actually limiting, you know, your growth and your um, your income growth, really, as an artist as well. So what I want to say here, again, is to align yourself with artists and industry pros and learn how you can be an asset to them. Um, be mindful of not being like all take and no give. Think how I, you know, when you say to yourself, when you're meeting with someone, like, how can I authentically add value to this relationship before you start asking for favors? Um, so let's talk about a few ways that you can network. So you're gonna tap into that power, right, of your music network. The first one, make an effort to get to know others on a personal level, which we just talked about. Have a coffee, grab a lunch. Relationships are everything. Relationships are the key to sales, the key to marketing. It, you know, when they say it's who you know, I mean, I, I hate that that's kind of the case, but it really is when it comes to opportunities and expanding your, you know, your reach, so to speak. Relationships are everything. Uh, number two, support a fellow artist by attending their live show. Uh, number three, attending a music conference. Start shaking hands. Show up humble, open, ready to learn and create a re real relationship and follow up on that relationship. You know, Michelle's on this call today and she and I did, you know, a, um, a really, really cool workshop together because she's a music licensing like queen. And one of the things that she told me and she told the group was that she cannot believe all of the people who meet her at music festivals and never follow up. And I experienced the same thing the last time, the last few times I've been at music festivals. I've created these really great um, relationships with artists and I've offered, you know, for them to like pick my brain or to get a call or whatever that might be. And they never follow up. And that's a missed opportunity. So I just want to remind you that when you are showing up at these music conferences and you, you know, you're meeting new people, don't forget to follow up because that is how the relationship is is formed but also how it's developed okay and those relationships you know can pay off 20 years later you never know like you might not know how that relationship can you know pan out today but as you grow and as you get to know each other better 20 years from now you know that relationship can be the reason why you know you open for you know a huge band um, and lastly take an authentic interest in the experts feedback and perhaps even attend um, an event or online training, just like you're doing right now with me today. So those are some really great, easy ways that you can leverage um, some networking um, for yourself. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You know, you might be thinking, ah, I really don't have time to do that. Um, time is money or, or attending music conferences or trainings with experts also take money. Um, and the, the most important thing that I don't want you to do is to like think, oh, I'll do that later. Like, oh, I'll get to that later. Because guess what? When you don't make it a priority to start networking and start being engaged and a part of these, again, it's a missed opportunity and later's gonna come and life's gonna happen and you're you're not going to be able to show up because you missed you missed it it was back there and you just thought there was all this time you know again life is short so you know i really want to encourage you to not wait to make things a priority just like you know when anything is a priority you 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 bend over backwards to make it happen for yourself don't you um you know so Oh, I love that. Uh, Michelle, you got a placement after 28 years of sending songs to someone. Exactly. You probably met them 28 years ago and then start making that connection and then boom. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Michelle. 
Um, so, you know, ultimately, when you prioritize, you know, your networking, when you prioritize, prioritize, you know, making relationships, showing up to these events, when you carve out the time and the energy um, and the and the resources to actually be present, then, you know, that's going to pan out for you down the road. And at the end of the day, relationships, you know, equate into opportunities. So don't wait. There is there needs to be more urgency, right? You need to realize that, you know, again, life is short and you never know um, what type of opportunities are going to work out right now. So, you know, I'll give you an example. When I wrote my book a couple of years ago, I it opened a door for me to, to um, speak at the Springboard Music Festival, which is actually where I met quite a few, um, you know, people on this call, even um, Mr. Durrell, Mr. Miss Michelle. Um, and I, I actually took the time to like, get myself out there. Um, I prioritized the networking. I got the opportunity to speak. I made it a priority and figured out a way to cover my three kids. It wasn't easy. It wasn't convenient. Um, but I prioritized the opportunity. And what happened? I've completely um, connected with so many industry experts, so many wonderful industry artists. And on top of that, I've created with people, uh, created relationships with people you know, who are in music licensing or who have sync houses or whatever that is. And guess what? That provides an opportunity for my clients. So when I have relationships with people all over the industry, then that's an opportunity that I get to pass along to my clients. And that's all because of networking. So again, the big takeaway is that relationships and networking today lead to opportunities, not only today, but opportunities tomorrow as well. So Let's talk about the, what you can do right now for this first power play, okay? So power play number one is to become a networking boss, all right? Like, just become a networking boss. And two things that you can do um, right now is to write down two networking opportunities um, or people that you can reach out to. So you can write that down right now um, after this um, show. After this show, um, I will actually provide you a printable so that you can do some homework after this and really take action on each power play that I gave you today. So just know that that's going to be coming your way as well. But for you right now, you can write down, you know, two networking opportunities or people that you can reach out to today and then take it one step further and commit to the calendar, like either write it down when you're going to call them or email them or whatever that might be, and then commit to setting up a meeting or attending an event. Okay. So that's what I want you to do right now is to really commit not only to two people or opportunities you're going to go network at or with, but also um, deciding when and cal put it, putting it in your calendar, okay? Because when we commit to the calendar, we're gonna actually make things happen. Okay, so moving on, power play number two. You gotta have a plan. All right, you must have a plan. So get hyper clear and specific on your artist vision, your goals, and the action steps that you need to take to get there. So it's a whole lot more than just saying, I want to be opening for so-and-so. I mean, that's great, but we have to be very specific. We have to think about, okay, well, when? You know, 12 months from now, six months from now, three months from now, what are the specific, you know, things that you want to accomplish? And then more importantly, what are the action steps that you need to take to get there? Okay, I believe that a plan minimizes frustration and minimizes self-doubt and leaves less room for distraction every time a new opportunity rolls around. You know, when you have a plan, you can discern, okay, is this an opportunity that's going to get me closer to my end goal or is this something that's going to knock me off course? Secondly, a plan allows you the opportunity for maximum productivity and confidence because you're waking up every day knowing exactly what you're tackling. You know, this is so that you can not wake up going, oh, God, what's what should I be working on today? Or, oh, I've got so much to do. I don't even know what to start with. Or when you have a plan and when you're clear on where you're headed, then it alleviates that frustration and overwhelm. And it gives you more confidence and productivity and efficiency. And a plan is also a blueprint. It's a blueprint for your personal life, your business, your goals and your dreams. Yeah, so having that plan is very, very important. And, um, you know, you might also at this point be thinking, God, having a plan is so overwhelming. 
every time I make a goal or make a, you know, an agenda, I never even like reach it. You know, it's, it's too hard to even stick with my goals these days. And, you know, I, I get that at the same time. Um, if you don't make any plan at all, then you will be in the same spot a year from now. It's, you know, inevitable because you don't know where you're headed. And when you're not clear and understanding on where you're, where you're heading, then you're not going to get anywhere, right? You're just going to kind of like sit still and like wait for things to come your way, which I, you know, would really discourage you from doing. Like, don't wait. Don't expect other people to put opportunities in your plate or on your lap. You got to go grab it. You got to go find the opportunities and you have to go make them for yourself because ultimately, you know, you're responsible, like I said, for your, for your own success. So, you know, one thing um, that I realized I had about a year ago, a meeting with actually two individuals. They actually invited me out. They wanted to have a meeting with me. And um, what happened was they were very curious about how, you know, what I thought about everything going on in their business. So I did a bird's eye view on everything going on in their business. And then from there, I offered them some feedback. I offered them, you know, some really constructive um, feedback on how they can move forward and, and steps that they can take and identified areas that maybe they could work on. And they were in total agreement like, oh, yeah, I know I should do that. But, you know, I, I yeah, I should probably be doing that. But I don't know. I'd rather just be, you know, in the studio making music. Um, you know, I just want to be an artist. Right. You know, it's I don't have time for that. I don't have time to be, you know, making plans. And if I'm just creating music, that's enough. Okay, I mean, that's fair for you to feel that way as an artist, but guess what? These two individuals uh, are in the same spot, if not digress. They, they might even be a little backwards. They haven't moved forward at all. So for those of you who think you don't need a plan, I'd like to ask you, you know, what, what how much, in, you know, progress have you made this year? What type of results are you seeing uh, without a plan, you know, is it, and is it, uh, stuff that you can count on? Is it, is it a way for you to measure so that you can keep repeating that over and over and over and get the same, you know, same great results? Um, you know, I think that the, the plan is, is just super important to your success. So I want to just encourage you to take action to get there, right? Don't wait, take action and create that plan. So what does that look like? You know, for some of you, it might look like um, thinking about a year from now, what do I want to accomplish? How can I move forward um, to, to reach my goal a year from now? Like, this is where I want to be. If that's overwhelming to you, then I want you to, like, take a step back and just think in the next three months. In the next three months, the first three months of 2020, what do I want to accomplish? In the first three months of this year, where do I want to be? So if we think in a quarterly sense, we can back that out weekly and then daily so that by the end of that three months, we have a very, very clear goal that we're shooting towards and you're hyper specific on that vision, right? Because when we are, we're going to be able to, to reach that three month goal. Okay. So let's definitely, um, think about ways that you can, um, take hold of that plan. So the first thing you can do is do a personal inventory. Um, again, I dive really deep. I have an entire week dedicated to this in my online course. And it's asking yourself really specific questions to identify where you're at right now, even like identifying the things that are working, the things that are not. And I always say, just take out the trash, like whatever's not working, take it out, get rid of it, throw it out. And then start focusing on the things that are working. And then start asking yourself those questions on, okay, well, what do I want to do? And what's important to me? What is the priority? Okay, so that goes back to that whole priority sense. Okay, so next, you know, you can do a massive brain dump, which would be to like, I like to just on a piece of paper, I like to just dump everything that's on my mind. And it's not always, you know, music or business related. Sometimes it's, you know, writing down, stop yelling at my kids. You know, it's, it's that simple. So ultimately, when we look at that, you know, brain dump, we can identify commonalities and areas that, you know, we're excited about. And we can circle those and you can look for those commonalities and you're going to get a really strong sense of identifying, you know, those one to two priorities that you want to tackle over the next three months, six months, year. But that all happens when you carve out time to 
take to really dive in and, and decide, OK, what is it that I want for my career moving forward? So, again, this is going to be power play. Number two is, like I said, have a plan. So are there any um, ways I would love to hear from you? Are there any you know ways that that help you as far as planning are concerned? No, wait a second here. Um, type in the chat if you feel really strong about your plan or, you know, if it's like a yes, I feel strong, then type in yes. Or if it's a no, I kind of stink at planning um, and it's tough, then write down no. How does that sound? <laughs> Anybody a yes? If you're a yes, I'm really impressed because planning is not easy. But if you are a yes, kudos to you. And if you're a no, hey. I'm going to know sometimes too. So I understand that. Okay, we're going to move on to power play number three. Here we go. Level up your business knowledge. Oh my goodness. This is so huge. So here we go. There are so many ways that you can level up your knowledge. And why? Why is this a power play? Because knowledge and growth is sustainable. If you're, you know, this business, this industry is changing every single day, every week. I mean, how many times a, a month do you like read or hear that Facebook and Instagram have changed their algorithm or changed their rules and you have no idea how to reach your, your fans because engagement is dropping and it's, it's really frustrating. So when you are educating yourself and constantly committed to growth, and learning, you're going to be able to stay on top of those changes, on top of those trends, and you're going to be able to have a sustainable career. You're not depending on anyone but yourself to get you where you need to go. Okay. And that's sustainable. That's sustainable. So you need to understand the areas that you need professional growth and get the support you need to create that sustainability in your career. So here's the thing, whether you're hiring a coach, consultant, or whether you're taking a course, you know, that support that you're hiring means accountability, which translates into you getting done thing, done, uh, getting things done faster and more efficiently, saving yourself time and energy. There's master classes, there's online courses, there's music summits and conferences. Again, think about your priorities. You know, how are you gonna wanna grow? Where do you wanna be at the end of that year? This is a power play because this is about you where, you know, having momentum at the end of the year and getting, you know, moving forward. But this is also about you setting up a strong foundation for your music career so that moving forward, you know, you're it's like building blocks. You're literally building one on top of the other when you're creating this solid foundation, you know. Hiring outside expertise and support, for example, is a way for you to, again, accomplish those goals faster, um, but then also learn different skills, you know? Um, and then again, veering away from this, those distractions that always, uh, and always qualifying those information you're receiving. There's just a ton of information on the internet that you can also, you know, scour the web for, but I do wanna um, make sure that I remind you to, to qualify that information qualify the information that you're receiving because there's a lot out there and you want to make sure it's good information okay so you know again there are so many artists out there and you might be one of them who thinks uh i i already know plenty i know enough honestly like i i can't i I don't really need to learn anymore. I just need to go in the studio and make music or whatever that might, might be. And, you know, if I had a manager, for example, or if I had a record label, then they'll just do it all for me. Right. So that's really what I'm shooting for. I'm shooting for just having a manager or someone else just doing it for me. But is that sustainable? Uh, I, I know a client who um, really could afford all of that. But ultimately, no one is going to care about your business more than you do. So it is it is essential that you're getting the education, that you're getting that um, business growth and, and, and information so that you can take hold of your career, not wait on anybody else, so that you don't have to rely on anyone else to make things happen for you. Not to mention that the fact that nowadays record labels, 
they want the complete package. They're not waiting. Um, they're not having you bring um, on, let's see, uh, let me bring you on and let me completely take care of your branding, your marketing strategy. Let me let me figure out your fan base for you. Let me um, let me just do all this for you. Like that's not happening. OK, record labels are looking for artists who already have a built in audience, a built in fan base who already know who they are as an artist, who already are engaged with um, with fans who are growing, you know, their strategies, who, who already understand their vibe and their, and their brand, and they know where they're going. Okay. They have a communication system in place, all of these different things. Record labels want the complete package. And then from there, the record label, you know, can handle like the mass distribution. Like that's, that's what they're for. They, they take what you bring them and then they just go and then they put you out there. Right. So, you know, yes, there are, you know, a lot of other things that record labels do in addition to really deciding the type of music you're going to record, play, all of these things. And having a record label do things for you or even pr pursuing a record deal may or may not be important to you. You might want to simply um, just have an independent career, which that that is totally doable and um i highly recommend it personally because i don't necessarily think you need a record label anymore but that's aside from the point the point is you have to take hold of that education you have to level up you have to um really own your music business okay so i i can't preach that enough it's so important and growth and knowledge is something that is sustainable and that's, you know, the huge, the huge takeaway. The huge takeaway is that, that, that is what is, that will create that sustainability for you. Okay. So highly recommend taking advantage of those opportunities. So again, a couple of ways that you can do that is through those master classes, through coaching, through consulting. Um, and, you know, really, you know, identifying someone that you can trust, identifying a mentor that, you know, would, would want to work with you or hiring, you know, hiring help, investing, making that investment in you and making that investment in your business. OK, so um, I would love to know just on a scale from one to ten, if you could um, comment, what is your confidence level in your current business and brand like? how you're handling yourself in your brand, your strategy, um, all of that. So if you could just type in the chat, I would love to see kind of where you are at, you know, a 10 being I'm super confident in who I am as an artist and how I'm communicating my brand. A one being I'm not confident at all. Okay, cool. Mateo, thanks for sharing that. So got a four here. We have uh, anyone else? Um, Okay, four. So there's definitely some growth. Nine, girl, I know you are. Five. Okay, cool. So these are totally normal, great numbers. Another five. Um, yeah, so, you know, and maybe that's another reason why you're here today is because you, you recognize the importance of, you know, getting knowledge and um, kudos to you for, for being here. I definitely um, agree that uh, it's hard. Good job, Chloe. Seven. That's awesome. It's hard understanding sometimes the direction. And, and look, we all evolve, right? You evolve as an artist. So you might have been a nine, you know, a year from a year ago, for example, but maybe you're growing. Maybe you're in the process of transitioning or in a process of an evolution, right? So in those um, situations, you might drop from a, let's say, a nine to like a five or a six. So um, that happens. And, and, you know, when I, I encourage you when that does happen to just take a step back, you know, take a step back and really identify, you know, what you can do to get closer in, in confidence to um, to that nine or to that eight, for example. Right. Um, so the other thing, you know, as far as what you can do right now to kind of help you on power play number three is to 
ask yourself, you know, how can you improve that current business confidence and that current business strategy? And, and then identifying what needs attention. So what areas for you personally, you know, maybe, maybe you really are just kind of a hot mess and all over the place and super overwhelmed and you need support with planning, strategy, organization, all of that. Maybe you are kind of bad at social media engagement. Like maybe you really struggle or just can't stand it. You know, there's, there's plenty of people out there who can completely uh, just not have anything to do with social media. Um, but as an artist, you know, that's where your fans are a lot of the times, you know, unless you're literally gigging, you know, several times a week and you're engaging and interacting with your fans um, outside, excuse me, outside of social media as well. So be thinking about areas that need attention, areas that might need growth, um, whether it's, you know, maybe it's brand continuity, maybe, you know, one, one social media uh, platform and your website and another social media platform are all different. Nothing is really, you know, melding together and nothing makes sense. So building out that brand continuity is also really important. And, um, you know, again, these are, these are things that I, that I dive into um, in my online course uh, in depth. Um, so if that's something that uh, interests you to check out, I hope you'll let me know. And you can always go to my website at briannarellismusic.com and learn more about, you know, that online course there as well. So we are um, we're going to do a quick recap on these three power plays. So number one, you're going to become a networking body, commit to learning. And um, you're going to take a look at areas that you might need professional uh, support on and create uh, this that will help you create sustainability in your music career. So those are the three power plays that you can make to get more gigs, more money, and of course, not be in the same spot a year from now. So how did we do? Tell me, I'd love to hear from the chat. Out of these three power plays, and we're looking at them right now, becoming a networking boss, having a plan, leveling up your business knowledge, you know, type in the chat, you know, is one of them something that, you know, you really need to kind of hone in on or, you know, perhaps all you can see how all three of these can be helpful to you. Um, perhaps, you know, you kind of have the networking down. Uh, <laughs> OK, so Mateo having a plan. I know having a plan is tough. Um, OK, Mateo, let's maybe get closer to that um that internet router for you perhaps uh having a plan yeah have a plan having a plan is difficult sometimes for people but here's the thing with the plan it doesn't always have to be so so tough um and i'll tell you what you know honestly this kind of leads me to our next steps because i want to help you guys create that plan and create uh those next steps right Planning is part of that. So what I'm offering, I don't, I'm not doing it um, very often. I just opened up over the next, let's see, between now and the next couple of days, I have several spots available for free strategy calls. So what I'm offering is for you guys to book a free strategy call with me so that we can really look at those next steps for you and so that you can um, understand how to get clear on those um, next steps in that planning so that you can really you know, start 2020 off um, clear and understanding where you're going. So that would be um, something I'd love to uh, have you guys on. And you know, I'll also say that accountability accelerates performance, okay? So when you book a free strategy call with me, for example, and I'll give this, to, this to, in a second, so look, you are 65% more likely when you are accountable to someone of completing the goal if you commit to them, okay? Now, this is where the free strategy call really, really helps. You're 95% more likely of reaching success when you have a specific accountability appointment, aka free strategy call, with the person you've committed to. So when you book your call with me, not only are you going to, um, you know, get some clarity on your next steps, but you're 95% more likely to actually execute upon them. So I just want to invite you um, again to book your strategy call with me today. Um, there, there aren't that many calls um, available between now and Tuesday. Um, so I would do it quickly. And if for some reason, you know, 
all of the calls are full and you're unable to get, get one that works for you, then please email me. You can email me at info at Brianna Rellas music.com, but definitely don't wait. These are going to fill up. These are going to fill up quick. Um, and yes, there is going to be a replay. So if you miss anything in this webinar, in this training, you can listen to it again and that replay will be sent to you. Um, and there's also going to be, um, opportunities for you to, um, hear from me, um, after this as well. So I want to go ahead and, um, open up an opportunity for you to ask some questions. So let me just get out of this slideshow here and um, go back to the chat. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm looking at Matt, making the jump music full time after the new year and having plan and knowledge. So Matt, I love that, you know, for you, it, do you have a, do you question, you know, whether or not you're able to do that? Like whether or not you have what it takes to make that full time jump, right? So, you know, when, when I hear, I get questions like this a lot, like, how do you even do that? And ultimately, I just wanna say, you know, when you wanna think about those multiple streams of income, I kind of, I, hand, I throw up my hand because, you know, um, there are, there's no shame in obviously supporting yourself. Um, and I'm just gonna go back to like, kind of like my acting days, okay? Like, how many actors in Los Angeles are waiting tables and even artists and, and musicians are waiting tables or working at a coffee shop while they're gigging on the weekends or while they're making music or music or, or any of those things, right? So there's no shame in that whatsoever. Um, and you need to remember that it's important to have those multiple streams of income. So for you, Matt, you know, you are thinking you'd like to jump into music full time. Okay, so you have to think about, okay, well, what's my nut? In other words, like, what is, how, how much do I need to make to actually do that? And maybe you're not going to be rolling, but how do you cover, you know, your basis so that you can jump into that and get creative, get creative with how you earn that income. Maybe it's teaching some lessons. Maybe it's, you know, being a online assistant. Maybe it's, I don't know, taking uh, doing working at a coffee shop or waiting tables or whatever that is, you know, um, ultimately you have to think about there are ways to make that happen for yourself. You just have to really dive in and, and get creative on, on what that might be. So, um, Sarah, any tips on creating a plan around a, 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 yeah, a demanding day job? Okay. I do have tips on creating a plan around a demanding day job. I used to work full time uh, in in um, advertising sales. I would get to the office at eight. I would leave at five. And um, a lot of times, for example, um, I would wake up really early and get my work done there. So for some people, you're not an early riser. Uh, so it, for you, it might be, you know, staying up late. Um, and so, oh, pardon me a second. Yeah. So um, for you. Like, I'll give you another example. Um, between the restaurant and everything that I do in my consulting career and the three girls, I wanted to write a book, right? That was a, that was a creative goal for me. So I woke up every morning at 4.30, and from 4.30 to 6.30, I wrote. I spent all of this creative energy because that's kind of like my genius hours. I wrote for two hours from 4.30 to 6.30. At 6.30, the girls woke up. I started um, getting them ready for school, for lunches, all of those things. But that was my time. Those those two two to two and a half hours were really precious to me. So um, again, I know it doesn't sound really beautiful and appealing waking up so early. However, um, when when it's important to you, you make it happen. So you really have to identify and ask yourself, like, how important is this really to me? Like, is it worth me setting my alarm at 4.30 in the morning and actually getting up and making time for that. Um, and I, I will tell you this, it gets easier over time. So at first I was like, man, this really, this really stinks. Um, but after a week of waking up early, I was waking up early, um, like without an alarm. I, and I was ready. I was ready to go. So it's a discipline. Okay. So that would be a tip that I would have for you with that day job. And, you know, if, it just depends. Some some day jobs, sometimes you're able to maybe work from home one day a week. I don't know if you have flexibility like that. So um, but definitely understand that, 
it's not easy, okay? But you can make a shift and carve out time to figure that out. And again, maybe that's also like at night, you know, not catching up on your TV shows or whatever that might be. Maybe it's like dedicating a solid hour, like saying, okay, from 8 to 9 p.m., I'm not getting distracted by anything. I'm turning my phone off and for a solid hour, I'm dedicating time to this, okay? Uh, let's see here. What is Michelle with your hands and so many pies? How do you, uh, how does one actually accomplish the big goals like you have? Writing and releasing a book, putting together your training program, getting other companies like your restaurant off the ground. How do you finish what you start? Um, I love that question. You're so sweet. Um, thank you for that, Michelle. Okay, it's a lot. So, but I, I, I gave you one of my secrets. One of my secrets is I wake up really early. I wake up at 4.30 and for example, the book project. You know, for the book project, let's be very clear. Like, I, I'm i a big believer in hiring a coach, okay? So I also hired, um, I, I went through a company and I took an online course to learn how to, to write and publish my book. So it was a step-by-step -step course with self-publishing school to learn how to write and publish my book. So I knew I was in this course. I had a step-by-step -step plan work. I'm really great at following directions and executing. So that's what I did. And then I committed, I made, I signed a contract to myself. In fact, in my online course, I actually, that's the very first thing that I have artists do is they print and sign a contract saying that they're going to dedicate the time, X amount of time per day. And I, I literally carve out the time. So the night before, I literally will look at my day and see what's happening. And I'll say, okay, from this time to this time, I'm working on this. From this time to this time, I'm working on this. So it's like creating those time, you know, spaces within my day in which I am committed to focusing on those tasks and not multitasking. So yes, I have a ton going on, but at one given time or at one given, you know, 12 to 2 p.m., I'm not multitasking. I'm focused on one project, focused on one thing. Um, and yes, I have the kids going, mom, mom, mom. But um, now I have all three of my girls in school. So it's actually become a little bit, um, a little bit better for me. So yeah, that's, that's definitely one way I, I carve out time the night before I carve out time so that I'm more efficient and productive in my day. And I hired, I mean, I hired an online coach, an online business coach, you know, that I'm accountable every single week. And not just that, but an online business coach is actually helping me um, you know, who's training me on, you know, different things, who's helping me, um, stay on track, who I'm accountable to. I had a, um, I had a writing coach when I was writing my book that I checked in with every two weeks. So I hired a coach for that. Um, and again, like all of this, all of this traction has happened for me in just in the past several years, because I've hired help. I've committed to getting someone to work with me and to, you know, paying for the help. And, and it's made all the difference because it's enabled me to get so much done. It's been really incredible. Um, okay, Sarah, I'm glad that that was helpful to you. Oh, waking up early seemed like a magic fantasy. Yeah, I think you should try it, Sarah. I think you should definitely try that. Michelle, you're awesome. Um, okay, so, okay, I've spent, I mean, I've spent thousands of dollars on coaching. Um, of the cost and that help and coaching gives an idea of the cost and that help. So, so, I mean, some coaches are, you know, $500 a month. Some coach are a thousand dollars a month. Some coach are $2,000 a month. Um, and I, uh, I've hired them all. Um, and not necessarily forever, but for periods of time, if I'm knocking, you know, my online course, for example, I'm a part of a really, really great mastermind right now. And, um, you know, what's happened to me by making that investment is that I have a full blown consulting, um, um, course, uh, I mean, an online course now, which allows me to have access and make a difference in all of these lives, which brings me income. Um, I'm making, you know, uh, thousands of dollars a month myself just in consulting because I've took the time to invest in myself, to get coaching, to get, to get help. And then in turn, I'm able to consult and guide and help other artists and also provide opportunities for them because I'm a huge connector and huge networker. So in addition to coaching my um, clients in their business um, in their music businesses and in their strategies and in their plans, I'm also connecting them with 
other professionals and other opportunities, whether it's performance opportunities or whether it's, you know, sync opportunities or whatever that might be. Um, so when I made the investment, you know, again, I made the investment in this online course for um, self-publishing school to learn how to write and publish a book. What did that turn into? That turned into podcast opportunities, speaking opportunities. It turned into me evolving into creating a, a consulting business for myself. So the financial return for me when I hired a coach, um, I mean, I, I made my money back in that investment. OK, and, and that, that's exactly what it is. It's an investment in your artist business when you hire a coach who's going to get you to that next level, take you to that next step. And ultimately, when you exhaust, you know, everything that you're doing and you take the time to invest in your business, invest in yourself and hire a coach, you're just going to get there faster. But also you're going to start seeing the, the monetary returns as well, because they're going to keep you on track. They're going to keep you accountable. They're going to give you opportunities and open your eyes to opportunities and even ways of doing things that you never, you know, maybe discovered or thought about before. So I hope that was helpful to you. Um, and, you know, I have a couple of other, you know, FAQs that I get a lot of times. A lot of people ask me about marketing and how it's so overwhelming and it's annoying. Um, and they ask me, OK, what's one thing that I could do to market myself better without feeling like I'm bugging people like. I talk to a lot of artists that feel like every time they're promoting their, you know, their new record, their new single or saying, hey, come check this out. They feel like they're bugging people. But here's the thing about marketing. It doesn't have to be this like scary, elusive thing. OK, marketing is can be very simple. Like when you strip it down, marketing is, you know, the, the promotion and the sharing of information. And ultimately, as an artist, you know, if you don't master marketing, no one is going to discover you. No one is going to connect with your music and no one is going to hear your message. And that's the point, right? The point of you creating and being an artist is to be able to share your message and share your heart and touch lives uh, and impact lives. So when you don't take the time to create that foundation in your music business of becoming a marketer, becoming um, an you know, proficient and confident in marketing your own brand, then it's going to be really difficult for you to create sustainability in your career because you're not telling anybody what you're doing and you're not sharing the good news, so to speak. So um, one really easy thing that you can do is just, you know, start. Don't be afraid like to talk about it, you know, and it doesn't have to be in a weird, pushy way. It's just you're excited and you can get behind that and you can share that. And guess what? People want to see you succeed. People want to see you do well. So don't forget that people are excited for you. People want to see you do well. OK, um, if there are any other questions, I would love for you to type them in the chat where I, I want to respect your time. We're nearing the end right now. So if you haven't already um, taken advantage of booking a free strategy call with me, I want to encourage you to do that right now. And um, I believe we have that button up right now for you to go ahead and good for you to go ahead and do that. So um, if you have any other questions, please type them in the chat. And um, while I'm waiting for that, I'll do one more um, question. So I know I'm supposed to comment on social media, but how do I comment differently on every emoji out there? Uh, it's so funny. I get that question a lot because as we all know, it's really important to be engaged on social media. Um, and sometimes we get, you know, either like a thumbs up or like a hundred percent or whatever. And, you know, it's it's just hard to comment on the same same thing every single time. Like, you know, thanks or uh, appreciate the hundred percent or whatever that might be. So, you know, always be thinking about how you can comment with, you know, a question like to be more engaged with them. And sometimes that requires like you taking the time to click on that person and see who they are and see what they're up to. Um, and not to say that's like to be like a cre creepy like social media stalker or anything like that. But, you know, take the time and engage with them. Ultimately, right now, the way that the algorithms are working on Instagram and Facebook is that they value um, human interaction and true, authentic engagement. And if they see that you're just, you know, responding with like an emoji every single time, they're going to basically flag you as really not caring. OK, and uh, ultimately your engagement and your reach will go down okay so um please understand that it's really critical 
that you're answering and, and responding to these comments in a really um, real and authentic way. Let's see, um, Diana, how do you deal with the frustration of having a plan and <clears throat> not having the success that you expected? I think that's a really, really great question and that's tough. So I always talk about, you know, before you set out on your plan, identifying what does success mean to you? Because your level of success is gonna be different from somebody else's, okay? so. Success to you might be, you know, 500 new followers on Instagram <coughs> or 500 streams of my new song on Spotify, whatever that might be, okay? And it might be completely different from somebody else. Somebody else might just want, you know, five super fans. Um, so, yes, it's frustrating to have that plan and then not have the success that you wanted. But at the same time, when you have the plan and you think about like the steps that it's gonna take to get there, like I'll give you a great example. You know, I had a plan to launch an online course. I'm so excited about my online course and I had to think about, okay, well, what is gonna make this online course successful in my eyes, right? And, you know, yes, a financial return, me not losing money, me being profitable in my online business, those are all measures of success and those are all important okay but what about the fact that i even took action what about the fact that i even put it out there and if i think long term you know think about all the times that people failed all the huge huge people i actually talk about this in my book you know at first that you don't succeed try try again um and i actually dive into like all of these huge people who experience success later in life and they've been grinding and pushing for years Okay, so success does not come overnight. It is, again, you're laying down the groundwork, you're laying down the foundation. And sometimes when something doesn't work, it's an indication that you need to take a look at how you presented the information. Maybe your messaging is off. Maybe your plan was not that strong. Um, or maybe, like, if you're selling uh, music or a product, maybe, you know, maybe we need to vet that product again. Maybe people don't really want that song or that, you know, it, I'm not quite sure, you know, what that plan was for you or what your product was. Um, if you haven't booked a call, you know, Diana, I'd love for you to do so, so we can kind of dive into that. But, you know, ultimately we, we need to really look at, okay, how are we measuring success? And when things don't happen the way we wish or hoped, you need to take the time to go back and either relaunch it, redo it, and test it's like testing those grounds it's like a, it's a testing ground right so you're not sure it you know it could have just been like a lousy time that you you know focused on this particular launch or plan or whatever that might be uh try again and then if it doesn't work at that point really take a deep dive and look at it and decide okay what do i need to how do i need to adjust right and then you need to shift trajectory a little bit uh, i hope that was helpful diana Awesome. EP that you released in a music video. Great. Um, I've been working with a ton of clients lately on uh, music releases and um, been seeing a lot of success with them. And it is, um, it is, uh, it's hard, right? So yeah, you de we definitely need to take a look at, you know, what your, what your strategy was on that. And maybe you need to, you know, get back in, into like relooking at it. And look, that doesn't mean that you can't find a unique or uh, interesting way to reshare, you know, the information. The music is out there, the, that's done, but there are ways, you know, just because you release an EP, you know, two weeks ago, doesn't mean that that project's done. You know, you need to be drawing out that plan, you know, or that campaign for the next year uh, or six months. You know, if it's an EP, you've got five songs, you can be milking that puppy, like at least for the next six months. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot uh, entailed there. So again, you know, you might you might need support. You might need support to making sure that you're you're absolutely getting everything that you can out of that EP. Um, so I would definitely um, I look forward to um, talking to you, Diana. Okay, everyone. I just want to thank you again um, for being here. Um, I do 
I do have one more little perk for you. So if you are a Google Slides, I'm sorry, not Google Slides, but Google Docs girl or gal, I'm gonna just type in this link. You can copy this link um, <clears throat> and it'll take you to your Google Drive. Make a copy of this. This is a takeaway for you today. Um, you can make a copy of this and, and save it into your drive, okay? And these are just some action steps that you can take based on those three power plays that we went over today. So again, you can click on that link, make a copy, save it to your drive, and then you can get to work on taking some action um, in your music business today um, on those three power plays. Um, okay, well, I hope that you have booked your call. I look forward to talking to you further, to really helping you create those next steps um, so that you can get the most out of the beginning of this year um, and in your music career. And I thank you for being here. And um, I hope you'll reach out. You can also follow me if you aren't already at Brianna Rellis Music on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you guys. I'm so happy you're here. And um, you can also check out more uh, about me at BriannaRellisMusic.com. So I look forward to getting in touch with you. And um, again, if you have any further questions, you can always email them to me at info at BriannaRellisMusic.com. Okay, you guys have an awesome weekend. Take care.